Hey guys, it's David here. Welcome to Slash Randy Network. Uh, and I got a new video. First of all, I would like to say big shout out to Dakota Shelburne for posting his first video with Slash Randy Network. Really great video. If you guys go ahead and if you guys are watching this, go check it out. It's uh it's actually a review slash collection video of the Blink 182 discography. Very good video. I really recommend you guys check it out. Um, we also hope to be adding uh, Raph Soto on as a reviewer soon enough. So um, you heard that, Raph. We want you. Um, so today I'm gonna sort of show off a little collection video, slash review thing, whatever. Um, and I used to, if you go back into the Slash Mini Films channel, my my uh, main channel, and look, I have. I used to have a really, really, really big video game collection. You know, and and I'm talking huge. I used to have like 15 systems or so. And I sort of sold them when I got back into music and everything. And, you know, I still like video games. So I figured, you know what, I'll get back into collecting, but I won't collect for much. I'll collect, you know, easy stuff. So I started collecting for the Game Boy again because I love Game Boy. I grew up with it, and um, I got some pretty cool stuff here. I think you guys are going to like it. Um, so I'm going to start with boxed games, and this is my Game Boy and Game Boy Color collection. I'm going to start with boxed games, because I only have three, and they're all Game Boy Color games. I'm going to start with this. This is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Um, sadly, it's damaged over here on the box, because RU Game likes to tape them up with blue painter's tape. This is notable for being the last Game Boy Color game produced in America, and you can tell because if you open it up and look inside, they skimped out on the packaging and everything. Um, this has basic stuff in it, safety for consumer safety and precautions booklet, which came with every Game Boy game. I used to throw these out if I'd have known I was going to collect them in the future. I wouldn't have. Instruction manual, right? Own, and then game. Which um, it's right here, and they used to um, they used to do things. They used to at one point have the uh, trays inside, which you'll see in a second. They used to do little cardboard trays inside where the games and stuff would be held. Um, and um, you'll see that actually right now. Um, next game I have here is Caesar's Palace, and you'll see sort of. I'm doing it from or newest to oldest, and this was released in 1999. Caesar's Palace 2. And um, it's pretty cool. It's a um, third person casino game. You go walking around and you play different games. It's kind of cool. I, I bought it for slots mainly. What I meant that they cheaped out with that is original um, Game Boy Color games used to come in a box like this. And if you look, they also used to have a shiny spine or shiny thing here. Um, this one, instead of coming with a game case, came in a little plastic bag. Got the game there. Caesar's Palace 2. I've only played this game twice. And it's also got the, um... So it's got the instruction manual and safety precautions booklet in it. Actually, no, this one just has the instruction manual in it. But, um, it was a good find. By the way, um, each of these games cost me $5 a piece in the condition they're in. So... Altogether, fairly pleased. And then finally, because, you know, the third movie's coming out soon, I decided to pick this one up for... pick this one up for old time's sake, and it is actually the um, Men in Black, the series. And this one is a hybrid cartridge that works with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. The way you can tell is Game Boy games have the little notches at the top. This one came in a little case like this. And if you look... It has a little notch at the top, so it works in an original Game Boy and a Game Boy Pocket. And the power switch would slide into here and prevent it from coming out. Plus, they are, um, they're black and solid, and they don't have the puppy thing up here that says Game Boy Color on it. And this came with the manual and safety precautions booklet. This was five bucks. So, that is basically what I have in boxed Game Boy games. Um, I'm just doing games for now. I'll get into my consoles in a bit. But, um, so yeah. And like I said, these were five bucks a piece. Next, I've got this little thing here. It's a little, uh, 
little gift box my girlfriend gave me for Valentine's Day. It had chocolate in it. Thanks, sweetie. Now I hold it. Now I hold all my Game Boy games in here because I have quite a bit. I have a couple imports in here because the Game Boy, as um, gamers know at least, is region free or can play games from all around the world, literally. So um, let me take a look at a few. Let me pull some out. Okay. We're going to start with this. I have a copy of Pack Attack, which is sort of like, think, think Pac-Man meets Dr. Mario. It's a, it's a Game Boy puzzler. I believe this is from 91 or 92. Pretty good game. It's made by Namco. Tetris, the pack-in. This actually came with my original Game Boy, and I'll show you guys that in a bit. But um, everybody with a Game Boy needs to own Tetris. Um, it's classic. It's addictive. And, you know, it's It's Tetris. You know, everybody loves Tetris. Simple as that. This, these next, or well, I'll show you this one first. Kirby's Pinball Land. This is from 1993, and it's fairly hard to find, actually. I got this one for about eight bucks. Normally, I don't spend. Yeah. What is it? I'm making a video. Did I put some mascara on you? No, you really yeah, can. Because like, I need to know how to do it. I don't want to put mascara on people. Okay. 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 No. Okay. Mickey, I'm making a video. I'm making a video. Leave. <laughs> no. At least wait until I'm done. No. At least wait until I'm done. So can. Maybe. Leave and Yay! I'll think about it. Okay. Yay! Hi, guys. I'm um, sorry about that. David. David. Like, Mickey, come on. How long please. is the video going to be? A little bit. How much longer? Come on, Mickey. Go. How much longer? I don't want to re-record this. Leave. I need to know. Okay. These next two games. I'm really sorry. The next two games... And, and you thought your mom calling you in the middle of your video is embarrassing, Dakota. <laughs> um, these next two are actually I bought together, and they were six bucks a piece. They're actually Yoshi and Yoshi's Cookie for the Game Boy, dated 91 and 92. These are both puzzle games based around Yoshi, and they're very, very fun. Very, very, very addicting puzzle games. Very fun. Um, Yoshi's Cookie I enjoy slightly better because the format's a lot different. Um, you know... And I appreciate them both. They're very good puzzle games, and that's one thing I, I, you know, don't really like to say this a lot, because the Game Boy technically did everything well, but one thing that the Game Boy did very well was side-scrollers and puzzle games. Side-scrollers in particular. <laughs> but, um, you know, puzzle games, they did very well, too. So, um, there's a couple games. Each of those cost me between one and, ten, one and eight bucks a piece. Um... Let me pull out another little stack. I have about 20, 20 to 25 Game Boy games or so. There's a game called Lock and Chase. It was released by Data East Corporation in 1990. So this is a fairly early launch title. And this is a pretty fun game. This is a Japanese pressing. I enjoy it. This is a Majesco Super Breakout cartridge. Um, this was released in 99 or so. And this is a Game Boy slash Game Boy Color Hybrid card. It's Super Breakout, Arkanoid, whatever you're familiar with. It, it's you, you can play it on your phone. Everybody's played it. Pac-Man. Um, I'm warning you right now. I have Miss Pac-Man in here too, so I own three incarnations of Pac-Man for the Nintendo Game Boy. Pac-Man is Pac-Man. You know, it's classic. And I've actually there's a funny post note about Pac-Man that I'll throw in when I get to my original Game Boy. The Final Fantasy Legend, which I actually got from Taylor Lovejoy of Slasher Mini Network as well. This is a very, really a short but really fun RPG for the Game Boy. It was released in 1989 by Square. And it's actually, no, my bad. It wasn't released by Square. It was actually released by Sunsoft. And, um, it was actually released by Sunsoft. But it's, um, it's really good. I like it a lot. And, um, I really recommend you pick it up. It's, there's three of them, all of which are different. They're really fun, and I think 3 was Game Boy Color compatible, if I remember right. Paperboy, you deliver papers, subpar, not bad. F1 Race, another launch title. Um, first game for the Game Boy to use 4-player multiplayer. It's pretty big. It used the F4 player adapter. Dr. Mario, which is a classic puzzler. I really don't need to say much about Dr. Mario. If you've ever played a puzzle game, you know how it works. Uh, Konami's The Castlevania Adventure. Um, great idea, poor execution. It is a side-scroller, but it is painfully slow and doesn't feel like a Castlevania game at all. 
Um, I have a copy of Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2000, which is a, um, I have it just because it was cheap. This was like two bucks. And, um, this is also a Game Boy Color hybrid, car or hybrid cart. Miss Pac-Man, I already mentioned that. Everybody knows about Miss Pac-Man. Alleyway, which is literally Super Breakout, but it was a launch title and it involves Mario. Arkanoid, Super Breakout, whatever. I got it because it was cheap. And then, finally, I have Wave Race. This is actually a re-release of Wave Race under the Million Seller branding. This came out around 91 or 92, maybe 93. It was originally released in 89 as a launch title for the Nintendo Game Boy. And um, I managed to get the games done in under 11 minutes. I feel accomplished. Um, normally it takes a little bit longer than that. Um, but no. So there you go. That is my, those are my, um, Game Boy games. And, um, now I guess I'll show you my consoles. Um, let me put my games off to the side. Now, I have two Game Boy consoles, and they're both, and I got them for really, really good prices. Um, I go to a place in Largo called M&M's Video Games. It's at the corner of Olmerton and Belcher. And it's just, it's incredible. And I got both of these there really cheap. I'll start with, I'll start with the one that I spent the least on. And, um, I like them all, so it's not a matter of which one I like more or anything. But, um, I'll start with the one I got most recently. And that is a box Game Boy Color. This is an Atomic Purple Game Boy Color from 1999. And... This is boxed and complete. Everything's inside. Um, this is the Game Boy Color right here. The only thing you'll notice on it is that the screen plate is aftermarket because the colors are split apart, or the letters and color are split apart more. I can deal with this, however. Um, it's got the console. It works. Everything's perfectly fine. Um, headphone jack works. The speakers work. Everything is perfectly nice. Um, information packet is still intact. It uh, contains Nintendo Power subscription card, unfilled out. Registration card for the system, unfilled out. And then safety consumer and precaution guide, like in the game boxes, and the Game Boy Color instruction booklet. Pretty basic, you know. And all of the um, anything that can be written on, like the um, the registration card and the Nintendo Power subscription are all in pristine condition and not filled out. So, um, it's very good on my part. Um, I'm usually very picky about that. If it comes with a Nintendo Power subscription, I don't want it filled out. When I was collecting Super Nintendo games box, I would get those a lot. And then, the prize of my Game Boy collection is actually a box 1989 Game Boy. And this did come with everything. I got this, oh, by the way, that Game Boy Color I got... 15 bucks boxed. <laughs> it was actually 25, but I went in and I bought several games with it. And I asked them if they could bring it down 10 bucks because I go in there a lot. And the guy that works in there is generally generally in there a lot when I am. I go in there on Saturdays before church. But um, the egg crating is inside, still intact. Garbage headphones, which I'm never going to use. Um, game case, this is what Tetris was housed in. Link cable, which... When my sister gets an original Game Boy, I will use this or that, or I can get a um, converter for the Game Boy Color and defeat her in Tetris. The Game Boy in this box, one second, the Game Boy in this box is in pristine condition. I'm not kidding. This is one of the best looking Game Boys I've seen in my entire life. Serial number matches the box, everything. There's one problem, however, and this bummed me out a little bit at first, but it's not that big in hindsight. The speaker is dead in the Game Boy. The speaker does not work. However, if you plug headphones in, it does. Now, here's... I mentioned... When I mentioned Pac-Man, I said I'd get to it earlier. Or I'd get to it later. And you'll see in a minute. Um, Original purchase receipt. This was purchased in... What did it say? I read it a few months ago. It was actually purchased from Nobody Beats the Wiz, and it's a, uh, it was an internet sales thing. And this was actually purchased for $70 May 10th, 1994. So that was the original purchase receipt. This was my purchase receipt from M&M's Games for it. This cost me um, $40, no cash, all trade credit. 
Um, this tells you how to load a game pack in or a cartridge. Another Nintendo Power subscription card from 89. And then these these manuals came with it. Um, I have this in there just because I know Taylor's got this, but uh, he's not getting it. Uh -huh. And then these three came with it. It came with Tetris, the booklet for that, the safety precautions booklet for the Game Boy, and then ironically enough, it came with the manual for Pac-Man. And I had had Pac-Man from when I had my last Game Boy. So when I opened it up and saw the manual for Pac-Man, I was like, oh, that's cool. So I kept that, you know. And I keep all my game manuals. If I don't have a box, I keep all my game manuals in with my big Game Boy here. If they're Game Boy Color manuals, I'll keep them in my Game Boy Color box. However, you know, I mean, I just, I always, and I always love this box art. This box art is so cool. Just with the wire, for, it's, so, it's like something out of Tron. It really is. It's quite just... It's so nostalgic, and I love the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color. You know, I grew up with them. I've, I've been playing with Game Boy since I was, like, four. You know, I mean, I remember Christmas of 2000 opening up a teal Game Boy Color with Marble Madness. Marble Madness and Disney's Dinosaur. Marble Madness was so great. Disney's Dinosaur was so terrible. You know, it just, they were great, and I will never ever forget the Game Boy. Such fond memories. If you don't have one of these, pick one up. You can usually get Game Boys used, not even, not in box, but you can get used in great shape for 10, 15 bucks. And that's original and Game Boy Color. Sometimes Game Boy Pockets if you can find them. Game Boy Advances even. I know everybody, at least my age, everybody my age has owned a Game Boy Advance at least once. You know, they're just, they're incredible consoles. The Game Boy Color was basically a handheld Nintendo, like a handheld NES, but with better graphics and sound. I mean, you know, I really recommend you guys pick it up and play one. David Gracia from Slasher Mini Network. See you guys later.